Hello everybody, this is Misfit from the Co-op Guys, and we are back with some more Factorio today. So, last time we had a little bit of an introduction to RoboPorts and construction robots and how awesome they are. And I mentioned that we were going to maybe look into trying to uh, using logis logistic robots. So, we're going to do a little of that today, not too much, because logistics is, requires a big amount of setup. Uh, to get things working, uh, but we're going to research the logistics system just so that we can unlock these uh, chests here, um, and that will help us with the logistics later on. Um, in the meantime, though, whilst we're researching that, I figured we'll make a start on getting this these walls all prepped. So, um, basically, I, I mentioned. Last time, I wanted to get rid of the exterior wall and put RoboPorts along the outside so that we could just uh, repair the center wall continuously and replace things we needed as opposed to having this outer wall here. So, we're going to do that. I've made a ton of RoboPorts. I think I've got 30 all in all. And oh, we just lost the wall somewhere. Yeah, this outpost has uh, ta been taking a bit of a beating and I've just started up this mine here, so um, this area of the wall is going to get more damage as long but it should hold out for now. Um, so, what was I saying? Yeah, made a ton of robo ports. These things are expensive, by the way. I've probably mentioned it before, but that's like, oh, I don't know, a ton. 450? Yeah, it's like 1500 steel and 1500 advanced circuits so a lot of resources went into making these robo ports and I'm going to need a lot more to get this done actually because we need to line the outside of the wall and the one thing I'm wondering is if I can put do it like this or if I can do it like this I think that they have to be connected to each other Um see that the yellow line will indicate whether or not the robo ports are connected um, and if they're connected, that means they're part of a logistic system. And the logistic system is basically a big network uh, of devices connected together, and they will see how many items they have, and are able to to share those items with each other. So, uh, what I'm going to do just for now um, is I'm going to set up all these robo ports along the exterior wall put in some construction robots, uh, but no repair packs for now. Um, tr trying to get the repair packs automated will be a little tricky. I'll have to see what I can do. Um, but one of the things that I'm going to try and use is something called a requester chest. And that's what we're researching right now. So um, I don't have too much experience with using robots and logistic networks and all that kind of stuff. So um, I'm not exactly on sure footing with this one, but we'll find out together. Um, I may have to do a little bit of trial and error off camera. Um, if something doesn't work, well, we'll try stuff on camera. If it doesn't work out, then I will change things up and uh, see how it goes. I should probably put lamps down next to these guys. Maybe. Now they're close enough to light here. It's okay. Um, but. Now this guy is pretty far out on the wall. No, no, that's okay actually. As long as the exterior, out exterior wall is covered by the green, it should be okay. Um, so this is going to take me a little while. Did I actually put ro robots in the last one? I don't think I did. I didn't. Let's fix that now. I said I'm only putting a few robots in each port, and they don't need to be absolutely. They don't need to have like a hundred robots in each robot port. It really depends on what you're doing, I think. Um, now, uh, one thing that annoyed me <laughs> when I uh, built these power things, I didn't, I didn't think too much, but they are just out of range of the top wall there. So if I'd moved this stuff up, I would have been able to just link this along the wall. And I could move them again. Um, 
but there's, like, there's, there's a radar dish in the way or something. I, there was some kind of reason uh, for me not doing doing that. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm just trying to square things off of the base, so I'm just going to put the rubble ports along this line. In fact, now that I think about it, I have been wanting to move this wall back for some time, uh, mainly because it runs into the water here. This wall is annoying, and there's only it's only one thick. I don't have the exterior one. I would like to push it at least out to this line here, so that we can have an almost continuous wall. Um, it would also give us a bit more room to put some power down. Um, I might do that off camera. I'm not sure. In the, but for now, I think what I'm just going to do... Oh, that's just out of range, isn't it? Sugar. Hmm. As long as it's still connected over there. Is it still connected to that one? Yeah. Okay. So it's not going to be perfect. Um, the range of these or the the Rubeport's logistics system is is pretty big on a small scale, but at a large scale, when you're if we're trying to connect up, like most of our base, it's not that big. Um, so we're going to need a lot of Rubeport's. I mean, just to link everything up. Um, Okay, I think I am actually going to move this wall back, uh, like, this wall out, uh, because I want this these rubble ports to be in line. I want the power done, and I want yeah. So I'm gonna I'm go what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head around, place down these rubble ports, gonna move the wall back, and we'll see what we can do from there. Well, we'll and then we'll th what we'll really do is start linking up the logistics stuff, and we'll give you a little demonstration of how that works. Alright, I'm going to do it. I'm going to move this wall. Uh, I'm not going to move it too far out. I'm actually just going to bring this bit out to here. Um, but that will be enough for me to link up the the walls later on. Um, so I shoved all the construction robots I had into uh, into the robo ports. It doesn't actually matter where they are. They'll all come as needed. The only thing that really matters is that how far away they are from where they need to go. But they'll eventually get over here. Um, so let's get rid of... Let's get rid of the entire wall. This might take a second. Um, so I've put down a couple of storage chests over on the far right hand side. So all the robots are going to head over to the right, end up near the right when I'm done. But we're going to get rid of this entire redundant wall. Oh gosh, this is taking a while. And there's an attack going on, it's a bit laggy, yada yada yada, but this should be good. And those guys too. Alright, so those guys, all my construction robots are now going to start tearing down that wall. I've already got rid of all the trees that were around here, and, and there they go, they're out to work. Wow, look at that! <laughs> the only thing that, that I find sometimes is you see those guys were on their way somewhere and they had to stop and recharge on the way. Um, but they do run out of power pretty quickly. Uh, but they only, they're only meant for short tasks, not long stretches like this. So if I was doing... Oh God, look at all the robots flying everywhere. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> um... But they're meant for short-range tasks. They're not really meant for long-range continuous operation, I don't think. Um, but they do not too bad a job of organizing stuff. I mean, there's all the trees that I cut down. Um, and I put some extra turrets in there because I tweaked our blueprints. So, or basically, I took out the uh, I took out the the extra wall I had, but I added more turrets. So. Even though we're getting rid of the extra walls, we're upgrading the firepower of this wall. Um, and they've almost done getting getting rid of this exterior wall. That would have taken me like at least half an hour digging it out myself. Plus I would have gone through about 10 pickaxes to do it. Okay. So that's that. And I left a little marker out here. 
Um, just so that I could get this wall put down. So let's just start placing down the walls. I'm not going to put down the gate ones just yet. I'll do that manually later on. And that should be enough for now. Wow, 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 wow. And just temporarily, I'm going to put one of these down. Just so that the exterior wall is powered. Nice. And now that that is all hooked up, let's get rid of some of this old wall. Making sure I don't take out the RoboPort in the process. Oh, we will. Oh, we will. <laughs> get rid of you too. And let's just take out this section as well. Why not? Oh, one thing I just noticed is that the RoboPorts are going to suddenly become out of power. Uh, that's not good. Um. I think they can still build, even though they're not powered. Not sure. Oh, that's that whole thing, whole area is out of power, and it's night. Perfect. Well, we'll just temporarily link that up. That is linked. Yeah. Okay. So it's all being linked to that RoboPort at the moment, which is all right. Let's carry on building the wall. We could just lay out the whole thing and then just take apart the inside wall as needed. I'm just worried that the new wall will be quite patchy. I'm not sure I did that right. I think there's something wrong. No, no, no. It's okay. It's all good. They're the only... <laughs> I'm worried I'm messing it up, but as long as I keep doing it kind of like this, then the only thing that's going to be messed up is the placement of some of the lamps, which is not a big deal. We can fix that later. If we fix it at all. Okay, I think we're going for the whole wall then, apparently. <laughs> I'm just carrying... I'm just going with it. Nope, nope. That's wrong. That's wrong. Get rid of that right now. There we go, fixed. And we'll go right to the edge of the building range. Like that. Perfect. And let's just start taking apart this wall too. It is really nifty having these robots. Um, takes a little setup though. I mean, these things are not cheap. And it does take a little bit of time, but it's worth it. I mean, look look at that. I mean, the wall is almost already built, uh, even though we're just taking apart this one. Oh, the game is starting to run a bit slower though, because there's so many robots flying around. This is only like, what? 500 or 400 or something like that. I've seen some people playing when they have like thousands of these guys running around. I would like to get up to that level. Fortunately, can't do that just yet. Uh, the computer just wouldn't be able to handle it. Um, but yeah. So that's going to take a little bit of time. Just, well, not long. But uh, I will let that this wall finish up, let the robots recharge, and then we're going to do the next part of this wall, which uh, might be a bit interesting. Who knows? We'll see. Okay, so we've got our new wall put up, uh, a slimmer, more refined version of the wall, with more firepower. Haven't put the gates in yet, but we'll do that later. Um, and we also have the robo ports, which are far enough back to be out of the line of fire, but uh, close enough so that they can make repairs and replace items as necessary. One thing I was thinking about, though, is that, essentially, the bigger our base gets, the more power it needs, and the more firepower it needs to protect it. So as opposed to just having large power areas, why don't we just combine the two things together? So we've got this power area here, which I moved off camera a little bit to make it a bit more compact, and now I'm taking it right back down. Now, the reason why I'm doing that is not... I'm just going to move it, and uh, the reason I'm moving it is because we've already got the RoboPorts here, and I've put them far enough back from the wall so that they can be, so we can squeeze one of these things in here. Um, if 
fact, I'm going to take apart this one too, and we'll see if we can get that one in. Um, one thing I've noticed, though, however, ever is these pylons get in the way. So if I hover over with this blueprint, that will fit in with the wall. Just once it's finished, once it's finished taking away that other stuff, I can actually place this down. And we'll have our power running along behind our exterior wall. That means if we ever need to make the wall bigger, we can always increase our power just by building it directly behind the new wall. And these guys are taking a while to strip this out. Well, it is the other side of the map, so that's probably why. Um, let's link you up here for a minute. Yeah, if, if some of these robot parts aren't powered, then technically they're not part of the logistics network. Therefore, the robots can't actually go through them. And that might have happened here. I may have to link this back up again. Let's just do that for now. I don't know if, it's if that was because the robots were taking their time, or if they just lost sight of the stuff that was here. In any case, as soon as this gets taken out, we can put down the new one here. And I'm going to basically move all these ones up. It also saves on robo ports as well, because we've got robo ports in the center here, and we have robo ports on the wall. Why not have both? Okay. Once that guy gets taken out, and these guys here, yep. Yeah. That should be enough for me to... Yeah. The only thing that's in the way is those two power pylons that I put down. So let's get rid of them. And place down our move power. Oh, I'm in the way. Boop. Build that for me, please, guys. They'll get there eventually. It also means I don't have to have any of these big pylons anywhere because uh, the power will be linked directly up to the wall. So, that's handy. In fact, what we might be able to do is speed this up is yank out this one. And then the robots will just come from here, pick up the stuff, and then put it right there. See if they'll do that. Oh no, they're flying away with it. <laughs> they must be picking it up directly from the storage chest. It's so dark. Let's get a light down, shall we? There we go. Because <laughs> that's helped so, so much better. Uh oh. Okay, well, this is evidently going to take a while because the robots are all spread out. Um, I'll be back with you in a wee bit then, uh, just so we can actually start t messing around with logistics stuff and uh, getting these robot parts hooked up with repair packs. Alright, I've done a pretty good size of the base so far. Uh, I've got pretty much this entire bottom wall and the side wall and the top wall uh, all protected and reinforced with the robo ports. So it's just this uh, small area up here and the outpost that I haven't done yet. But as you can tell by all these flashing messages, I have not got enough turrets in my storage chests for the robots to actually place them out. There is a way around that. Well, there's multiple ways of getting around that, but um, if production it well if the source of our turrets is within the logistic network then we can actually just provide it directly and manufacture things as needed so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a couple of robo ports in line ideally yep like that and then another one should be able to fit up here and let's just get it close enough Like that. Okay. <coughs> oh yeah, we need to get some power to these things too. I always forget the power for some reason. Not sure why. Um, close enough. And one more. But the whole idea of uh, oh, a couple more actually. Um, the different chests that I researched and unlocked a minute ago. Um, there's four all in all, I'm only really planning on using three. So, a brief explanation of these chests as far as I can understand it. Storage chest, right? Storage chests are basically all linked together and they form one network. So, even uh, 
It works just like a normal chest. However, if you hover over it, on the right hand side you can see that I have 6,700 wood, 1,700 walls, 110 electric poles, 49 lamps and all that sort of stuff. That's not in this chest, they are in all the storage chests. So all of that is spread out amongst all the storage chests which I have. Uh, I've got a couple down here and a couple up here from when I was doing the wall work. Um, so that's all the stuff that's in there. So it doesn't mat so when it comes to the robots, it doesn't matter which chest you put stuff in. If you tell it to grab something, it will grab it from any storage chest it can find it. So that's really useful. Um, and then there is the requester chest. The requester chest, if you look into it, has these slots here for logistics. And if I click on one of them, I can click a particular item. Uh, let's just go for intermediate product. Where is it? Wood. Yeah. Let's get some wood and let's get 10. Alright. So we'll do that. So that requ requester chest is requesting 10 wood. Um, oh, this demonstration will not work at the moment because I don't have logistics robots, which we can build right now, actually. Let's go up and get some... We'll need some of these. And uh, yep, that'll do. And we'll get some frames. And we'll actually make some of these logistics robots now. Uh, and they are like their construction robot counterparts, except they are more expensive. Let's make the whole hog and go for fifty. There. So these guys they're pretty much the same as the construction robots, except as opposed to moving buildings, they move items. Um, so if I was to put a couple of these logistic robot guys in here, let's just try, let's just send one. Straight away, off he goes, and he is a way to collect the wood. So as long as all these chests are within the logistics network, and the logistics network is big enough, then everything should be in reach. So he's a way off to get some of that wood and bring it back here. Um, the third chest is the passive provider chest. And this one is kind of like a storage chest, except it will put things into the store the uh logistics network. There we go, there's the a little logistics guy coming back with a bit of wood. Um storage is just really for surplus and of stuff. However, these two, the the passive provider and the requester chests work really well together. Basically, if you had a factory, like this one here, let's say advanced circuits, right? If we put a passive provider chest on its output as opposed to the conveyor belt, it will put items into the logistics network. And then if we put a requester chest here, as opposed to this conveyor belt, then the robots will come along, pick up the the circuits from here and put them into the chest there. So it is pretty handy for uh, getting around of a lot of complicated conveyor belt stuff and we're, we are going to be doing some of that in the future. At the moment we are going to get a passive provider chest there and we're going to leave it, leave it limited to that. Now the construction robots will also put here they come Straight away, they've come and seen that there is a source of turrets, and they're coming to dispense them out amongst the wall. <laughs> so now, I no longer have to worry about replacing turrets manually. They will come and do it themselves. Um, I will set up another one. Where is our wall? I think it's over here, actually. Our wall production. Yeah. Can I move this one over? No. Let's just put up another RoboPort. Because why not? Um, put it there. Get some power. And change this. Where's my passive providers? Uh, oh, actually, off camera, I did put a storage chest there. Um, because this one completely filled up. So if I just ch change this one to a passive provider keep it limited, uh, any walls that are needed to be replaced, the construction robots will come and pick it up from there. 
Um, this poor logistics robot is coming back and forth uh, just getting that wood. But he's doing not too bad a job. It is a bit of a trek for him. Um, so what we really want to do though is get some repair packs on this because it's all very well replacing the uh, the items on the wall when they break but we want to keep them repaired as well so we've got our repair packs automated way back here um, well what we want to do it's not a wall is this put that there and we want a passive provider chest We'll put it here, but we'll limit it to 200 repair packs. And we'll get this into the logistics network by, you guessed it, another RoboPort. Um, let's see if we can just... There we go. I do like the lines that are kind of indicating where I need to put this. Yeah, that's directly in line. One there. And hmm. Uh, I'll f okay. I'll yank these out, but I'll fix it in a minute. Basically, I want the <laughs> I want the rubber ports as evenly spaced out as I can. This is a problem with the placing the rubber ports after you've built a base. Right. So let's get some power to you. There we go. And some power to you so that everybody's all connected. There. So once those, because the RoboForce take a little while to turn on for some reason. Um, no, actually, let's just fix this now, but oh, I can't. I can't. Yes, I can. I can fix this because I can do this and then that and then that. Perfect. And that works too. There. All done. Almost. Not quite. Not at all, actually. There we go. Right. And the one thing we want to do so. Actually, this should already already be connected. Um, this is in range. That is in range. So, our little control, uh, construction robot guys. As soon as something gets damaged, they'll come. In fact, let's get a demonstration. Let's get a wall up here. Really crappy wall. Okay, ba -ba -ba boom. There's a crappy wall. And uh, let's shotgun some of it. And it'll take a little while. Because uh, the construction robots are all on the outside of the base. But <coughs> they will detect the damage on the walls. They will locate the nearest uh, repair packs. And go repair the damage. And if they still have some of the repair pack left. They will take it into the robo port that they're at. And they'll all combine together. And they'll have some repair packs at the base as well. Now what I could have done. Is have requester chests by all the robot ports so that the, the, the robots don't have to go, go flying about to pick up the repair packs but the pro there is a, a big problem with that um, and that is that there is no actual way to limit how many repair packs will be putting in it so if I was uh, we'll do this right now it will only be a small waste uh, do I have any requester chests? yes I do okay so if I put a requester chest there and I request repair packs. Where are you? There. 50 of them. Perfect. Right, if I do that, and uh, let's just uh, sh shove some logistics robots in there as well. So they're going to start ferrying repair packs from the repair pack factory over here to this uh, to this robot port. Um, which I need to move. Oh, come on. Come on. And I need to power that. Oh, a bit too big. There. Um, let's set that up again. Oop, there we go. Um, so as soon as I do that, 
it's going to take all the repair packs out of that chest and put it into the robot port. Um, as so it's going to fill up all of these plus then we'll have the 50 in the chest. That's far too much. We don't need that many. Uh, I could take that out and put a smart inserter in there. Um, however, this is the... Uh, let's see. Yeah. It, it is an item filter on it, but not a, a quantity filter, except for the logistic network. But that limits how many items are in the entire network, not just what's in the thing in front of it. So, I could limit it to, say, 400 across all of the roboports, but it wouldn't balance out, and the robots will still be flying about. So I figured if they're going to be flying about, let's just make them fly about the way we wanted to. So, yeah. Um, and let's just shove those repair packs back in there. There we go. So, wherever we have a roboport now, as long as it's connected, it will replace any of the turret damaged turrets, damaged walls, or even fix them if they're damaged and not completely broken. All without having to do a damn thing. Which is brilliant. I never need to have to worry about this wall ever again. I do, all those attack warnings doesn't matter. I don't have to go check them out because they're never gonna get they're never gonna break through because essentially the wall is regenerating itself over time. Yep. I'm feeling pretty good right now. <laughs> well, all of that talk and experimentation with uh, logistic robots has uh, kind of cut our time short today. Um, I spent a bit too long talking about all that sort of stuff. Uh, oh, yeah, we kind of need a guy here. Uh, mm, ideally, I want him in the center. That's not good. Um, oh, let's just put him here. Because why not? Gives him power to him. Because this base could do with being fixed up. So let's get some robots in here to fix the place up. Um, but yeah, all this talk has uh, kind of cut my time short. Uh, so we didn't get to do too many fun things today, apart from take down an entire wall and rebuild it again. That was fun. Um, but other than that, uh, we haven't done any cool new things. So we'll try and do some more of that. Or some more stuff with trains. We do need to do some more stuff with trains because this iron mine has almost run out and I haven't hooked up the other ones yet. So we'll probably do that next time. Maybe get some the co a copper train set up as well. Uh, we just turned on that copper mine. but um, Is anyone coming out here to repair? Oh, this little robot is out here all on his own. Uh, fixing this base up. Good for you. Um, yeah, the more robots you have in this network, the the better it will run. Uh, so yeah, um, that'll do it for today. Oh, here come the rest. <laughs> that'll do it for today, so thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I shall see you next time. Goodbye.